thought we were here for a U.S. men's national team, but apparently it's a drag racing event. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? It is Uncle Mad. We are at Jodis Park, not for a Nashville SC match. We are here to see the U.S. men's national team take on Ghana, one of our all-time thorn in our side teams. First time the men have ever played here. We came here, I believe, last year, or was it even earlier this year? I don't know, time is a flat circle for the women's U.S. team, so it'd be fun to see the men's team here tonight. We were just over there by the bus entrance because right as we were walking up, two coach buses kind of pulled in. Looked like it might be team buses, but they were kind of pulling away from where the Nashville SC players usually enter at, so we thought maybe they're going in a back entrance or something like that, and also maybe it wasn't the U.S. team buses. So I wanted to go on in, check out the merch, check out what all is available inside for the game day experience, and uh, go from there. Gonna be honest, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to give my best effort in this match because just got off a plane from England a couple hours ago, although it is perfect timing. Come back from England and do like the most patriotic thing you can do, go to a soccer match. So first interesting wrinkle to the match, they're not letting flags in. Which a buddy of mine, we're trying to go in, and there's also a guy with a Ghana flag. My buddy's is more like a scarf that looks like a flag, but they wouldn't let him in with it, which I am having a hard time remembering ever watching a national team game in person or even on TV where you didn't see flags in the crowd. And I'm not even talking like on a pole, like waving a flag. I'm like, just like throwing around your neck, tied around your neck style flag. This is bizarre. Got full blown little mini short sighted games going out here playing the beautiful game. So logical explanation my friend just came up with. There are probably certain flags that for political reasons, they wouldn't want brought into the game tonight. So rather than ban those specific flags, they have to just ban flags across the board. And I was like, that makes perfect sense. All right, here's what we got here. I like this hoodie right there, but not for $135. I like this jacket right here, it's a nice jacket. All right, so we left the main store really quickly because for some reason they weren't selling scarves in there. But they said they had them in some of the pop-up stands around, so we're gonna go check the pop-up stands. I would imagine a lot of the same stuff will be at those that would have been in the main store. We'll look at some of the items available at this little pop-up one here, but no scarves here. Huh. I'm having flashback to NSC's USL days they did a uh, specialty St. Patrick's Day scarf one game and we were like the first like had to be first 20 to 30 people in the gates and by the time we got to the merch store they were like yeah we already sold out of St. Patrick's Day scarves so we're like that's impossible so we just went to that little papa stand and they said they already sold out of scarves so I don't even know if it was a match specific scarf but if like 6 30 gates opened at 6 if they're already out of scarves like there's not that many people in here right now that's insane so we got our first players out for warm-ups. It's the goalkeepers. Nara starting number one. Matt Turner's right there getting his stretches in. And we believe down there in what would normally be our seats is probably his family because he waved to them, they cheered for him, and there's at least one person in a Turner strip. And that's our usual seats, and they gave them to Matt Turner's family. Rude. The rest of the USA team has taken the pitch. Lineup that came out just a minute ago. It's a pretty strong looking lineup. Kenny's only the, uh, the only non-regular starter not in it. And there comes Ghana. Starting group is going through their routines right here in front of us. Good to see Gio back with the lads, seeming happy. Now that his parents aren't being a burden on top of him. Of course, we also have the main man, Christian Pulisic. Legend of the game already, with much more to accomplish. Should have brought back Michael Bradley for this match. One time return now that he's retiring. So a few observations from now being in the stadium. The flag ban appears to be very loosely enforced. I've seen just... Like, there was a dude who was wearing a split U.S. Ghana full of flag as a shirt. I'm watching a guy walk directly in front of me right now who's got a flag wrapped his neck. There's a kid sitting two rows in front of me who's got like a flag on a pole that he was waving. So that flag ban or whatever that was, that seems to be either a miscommunication or just not being fully enforced. 
Uh, the other thing is the scarf thing. My buddy's convinced that there was actually a scarf for this game, but I'm, I think what was more likely to happen is they brought a bunch of gear for this game and the previous friendly that was up in Connecticut against Germany. I just bought a bunch of generic like USA 2023 scarves, something like that. Probably sold all the scarves at the Germany game and didn't have any left for this one is my theory. Because I also don't know why they'd make a game specific scarf for a random friendly against Ghana, but who knows. Some behind us singing an anthem too, so good showing for them. And welcome to the board and National Rays two time Grammy Award nominee, Ruby Amanfu, to perform the Star of the Soccer didn't bring in my boy Music City Pyro and his crew to light up uh, the anthem with nice fireworks. Sadly, they were kind of cheap on these friendly, but still charge extraordinary price for them. Get the Volkswagen Tiny Car for the fastball. There it is, the most ridiculous, stupid thing I've ever seen. Back it up, back it up. It's not quite where it needs to be yet. I guess that's as close to the referee as it can get. Good job. There you go. Good job. All right, now get the car off the field. Don't run over Pulisic. It would be hilarious if I pulled a T-Rack and just ran over a player.
Clear the safety. Can the U.S. counter? Uh, Go on nods. Uh, good, good shut down of the counter. Good shut down of the counter. All right. We're about to see the rarely seen in the professional level indirect kick in the box for USA. From where a Ghana player was just sitting on top of the ball. Now that is properly identified in the laws of the game as dangerous play. Although high school coaches who are stupid will often yell, Who's playing on the ground? You can't. Well, they're not British. I've been in British accent last week, so I had to get out of it. They talk more like this, like uh, coaches from Nashville. They say things like, hey, he's playing the ball on the ground. You can't play on the ball on the ground, which isn't true. You can play the ball on the ground as long as it does not create a dangerous situation, which the Ghanese, is Ghanese, is that correct? The Ghana player just did. So now USA gets an indirect free kick in the box. If you're not familiar with an indirect free kick, that means one U.S. player has to touch the ball before it can go into the goal. So you can't shoot directly on goal. It has to be touched by one player or more before it can go in. Or one player and then another player. So typically in these situations, one player puts an easy, simple toe tap on the ball and the other player just cranks it. And the Ghana team basically has to set up their entire team as a wall inside the goal. attacking football and had a coach who knew how to do that. Man, they shouldn't let Barry Halter on the bus after this match. Thank you, referees. Yes, applaud the referees. We do the work so that y'all don't have to. Four oh at halftime. Certainly looks like Weston McKinney will be making an appearance in the second half. He's kitted up and ready to go. Ten minutes in the second half. USA hasn't scored yet. Greg's got to go. Unacceptable. It's very typical that uh, USA just was unstoppable and scored four goals in the first half when they were going at that goal. Now they're going at the goal directly in front of us, and not much is happening. Granted, they did take off like their four best players, and then also Gio Reyna. Deep free kick for the USA. Maybe we'll get some action here. Had a few sniffs in the box early on, but this looks like it could be a good one. Brennan Aronson. Nah, the poor delivery. Go yourself, Jess. Good showing from the lads. But of course, zero goal scored in the goal right in front of us. Come on, Greg. A brother, a sister, I'll never give up on you. Are we not doing that one today? No? A brother, a sister, never give up on you. No matter how far the red, white, and blue, I'll never give up on you. I just rewrote it. Good job, lads. Here comes that turn. Good job, lads. Like Maddie Turner's coming over to visit the fam. Good job, Matt. Ricardo Pepe might have a couple family members over here. Maloney's going over to see some people over there. Pepe family members there. Matt Turner saying what up to the fam. It's 
pretty cool. And Turner's family time has turned into autograph and selfie time. Good job by him, good job by him. It's interesting, uh, Pepe was over here talking to his family and he got uh, pulled away by a coach or a representative summoned over. Looks like he's got to go do some media duties, which is kind of weird. It didn't play much or do much in the game. Not sure why he's the one that's got to go do the talk in there. It's, he also kind of looked frustrated when he sitting over there, which, you know, probably didn't get much of the ball. He wanted to score. You can't, can't blame him there. Good overall performance by the lads. Thanks for coming out to Nashville. Hope to see him again soon. 4 0 final for USA over Ghana tonight. Exciting, high tempo first half. A little bit of a sleepy second half, but it went by fast. That was weird. Like, my buddy I was with turned to me. He was like, This half's flying by. And I looked up and it was like the 80th minute. I was like, Whoa, where did that come from? Kind of needed that after the results some of my teams have been having recently to see one of my teams just go out and lay a beating, lay a thumping on their opponent. Good to get that recharge of. American Energy after being in England for several days. If you've been enjoying that series of videos, they'll resume tomorrow. So stay tuned, subscribe, turn the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. A little bit of an underwhelming showing from the crowd tonight. Felt like maybe 18,000, 19,000 tops. I don't know with that. I don't remember if the official attendance, I don't, I've never heard the official attendance get announced. Hope that doesn't, you know, affect us for selection for matches going forward because I mean it was a Tuesday night 7 30 kickoff for a friendly with outrageous ticket prices that should hang on which we know U.S. soccer is a money-making non-profit so it's going to do things to make as much money as possible um but I was thinking about it because I was like you know eh, we'll be fine we've been solidly in the rotation for uh, World Cup qualifiers and stuff like that in the last few cycles. And then I was like, there's not going to be another World Cup qualifier until like 2028. Because as the host nation in 2026, we automatically qualify. So we don't even have any qualifiers coming up over this next three and a quarter years, which is crazy to think. And for whatever reason, National SC has not really been as much in the mix for like Gold Cup and some of the domestic tournaments. So... We'll see. Who knows when uh, the next time the boys in red, white, and blue will be to Geodis Park. <laughs> Who knows? Glad we were there for the first one. It was an enjoyable match. Fun was had by all. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.